Hallelujah. Father Lord, I just thank you. Father Lord, I just worship you. Lord God, there is none like you. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this ministry. I thank you for how you're building people up, oh God, to do your work, oh God. Father God, it's an honor to be used by you today, my God. Father God, I surrender myself unto you, oh God. Father God, that you will use me to minister into the lives of your people. Father God, this word may not be for everyone, but the person or persons that you have created this word for, Father God, I pray that it brings about change in their life, oh God. Amen. Father God, that something new will happen in their life, oh God. Amen. Father God, that this word will come alive in them, oh God. Father God, that this word will accomplish its purpose in their lives, oh God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, I ask that you decrease me so that it's not me speaking, but you speaking through me, my God. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If we could just open up our Bible to the book of Matthew. When we're there, we can just say amen. 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 You guys are there before. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 20. Verse 24 to 28. Matthew 7, 24 to 28. Amen. Okay. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into this parable called the wise and the foolish builders. Amen. Amen. In this parable, we hear, it says here, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice like a wise man who built his house on the rock, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. There are two different types of builders. Here. The wise and the foolish. Amen? Amen? So this parable is speaking to believers. People that hear the word of God. There are two types. Those that hear the word and those that hear and do what the word says. Amen? Amen. So the one that heard the word and put that word into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. When trials and tribulations, rain and stream and wind <coughs> blew against this man, this, his foundation, it didn't fall. It didn't break him. The title of today's sermon is, What is Your Foundation? Amen? Amen. 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 Do we fall under the category of the hearers? Or do we fall under the category of those that hear the word and put the word into action? Amen? Amen. Our life is a building. And whatever it is that is your foundation, when the storms of life come, trials, tribulations come, your foundation is tested. 
And whatever is your core will come out during those trials. For example, it says here that the wise man built his house on the rock. What is that rock? Jesus Christ is our rock. He's our chief cornerstone. In those days, the chief cornerstone was a large piece of rock. And it used, they used that rock to support the foundation, the building. All the other parts of the building would rest on that rock. Now, if you're rooted and established in Christ, when you're facing situations, amen, amen. God, the word of God that's in you will spring to life. And literally, <coughs> they're like arrows. So, God has called us to put on our full armor, amen? amen? And we're soldiers in the army of the Lord, amen? amen? So, I'll give you an illustration. So, here I am, I'm in battle. I'm fully equipped. I have my breastplate, I have my, my shield, I have my armor, I have my sword. Amen? amen? So, now that I'm fully prepared, the word of God is like a weapon. When you meditate on the word, day in and day out, it's like you're putting it into your spiritual bank. So that when trials and tribulations come your, come your way, because it didn't say it wouldn't come. It said it's sure to come. It will come. It's just there are two different type of people because of the two different type of foundation have a different, two different type of outcome. Amen? amen? But if you're fully grounded in the word of God, amen? amen, you will notice that when you're facing such a situation, the word of God that you've been meditating on day in and day out, begin to spring to life concerning certain situation. Amen. You find yourself in a situation where the spirit of the fear tried to creep up on you. All of a sudden, the word of God comes to life in you. God did, not, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of what? A sound mind. Amen. Amen. So let's define what this foundation is. Foundation is the base that is built below the surface of the ground to support the building. It is the body or the ground on which other parts, amen, amen. are overlaid. Hallelujah. So if Christ Jesus is your core, amen, amen. everything should be built on it. Listen, if, if Christ is not your foundation, it's sad. If you, your roots, if your foundation is prosperity, oh God, I need wealth, I need wealth. You're working to acquire wealth. It's sand. And what did God say about the man that built his own on sand? Amen? Amen? But everyone who hears these words of mine and do not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his hand, who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against that house. And it did what? It fell with a great crash. May that not be our portion. Amen? Amen. The Lord said in Isaiah, can you turn to Isaiah 28, verse 16 to 17? Can someone read that for me? Isaiah 28, 16 to 17. Amen. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion, for a foundation is stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Amen. When you put your trust in God, you will never be disappointed. Amen. When you put your trust in God, you will never be disappointed. You may pass through shame, but it will never be your final destination. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can someone turn to Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 21? Ephesians 2, 19 to 21. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, Amen. having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Hallelujah. in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So a lot of the times, believers, amen, we're believers here. 
we become saved, we become born again. We believe Jesus Christ is our Lord, God, and Savior. Amen? Our salvation is sure. We repent of our sins. Amen? Jesus is sure to forgive. What about the sins of the past? See, a lot of times when people think about their foundation, they think it for the time that they were born. They don't realize your foundation is from your forefathers. It's from your grandparents, your great-great-grandparents. A lot of the time when people confess and repent of their sins, they forget to include the sins of their forefathers. Amen? Amen. Listen, there are strongholds in people's lives that people are seeking deliverance for, right? That have been inherited from generations. Amen? Amen? Those things need to be pulled uprooted from your foundation. Amen? So that you can receive all that God has for us. God is taking this ministry to another level. As we are fasting and preparing ourselves for the Power to Prosper Conference, God is getting ready to release a special blessing in each and every one of our lives. But we have to fix our foundation. Amen? Amen. There are certain things that people, they are facing day in and day out. They read the Bible every day. They fast and pray every day. They see God's faith. They, they come to church, they're on the prayer line, but yet the same struggles on back and forth over and over again, and if there's no breakthrough. It may not be your situation, but it could be a foundational issue concerning that. God is like a farmer. Amen? Amen. And we are like the soil. Amen? Amen. And as a farmer, you want to prepare the soil. Amen? You want to get out all the junk, all the weeds, all the sticks, and put all the special fertilizer. You want to get the nice plant, put it in, but then you want to feed it um, the nutrients it needs, make sure it has enough sunlight, make sure you water it. But it's like some of our foundation. that He sees the soil, and there are weeds all around. And he's thinking to himself, okay, I want to put all these nutrients in this because I, I love my plants. I love my flower. I want it to blossom. I know its potential. I'm the one that created it. I packaged it for something. So I have prepared something before the foundation of the world for this plant. And I want to put it in it. And I want to send people to water and to, 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 to plant seeds into it so that it can blossom. So that every flower can reach its full potential while it's here. Because remember, when you're saved, right? When you're saved and you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord, God, and Savior, you confess of your sin, your salvation is sure. Amen? So long as you continue to walk in Christ. We're talking about you reaching your maximum potential here on earth. There are delayed blessings in some people's lives. Delayed blessings. Because our foundation is not fixed. And God has seen the weeds. Just, just all around. He's thinking to himself. Now if I pour all, all these delicious food for this plant, this weed is going to steal that nutrition that my flower needs. If I pour the water, the weeds will just fall out. I need to give her a let her know or let him know that listen, you have authority to speak to that root and uproot it from your life so that when I pour out all the blessings, it will be only you that receives everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I believe this word is not just for me today. There's, a, there's something that God wants to release in our lives this July. As we are fasting, as we are praying for this conference, we need to seek God's face in God and repent of the sins of our fathers, or our grandfathers, our grandmothers, our, our ancestors. Because yes, you are saved. But can you testify that your grandmother was saved? Can you testify that your great-great-grandfather was saved? For all you know, to be a voodoo priest, or an occult, or worship idol, or a fornicate, or, or you, you don't know. And those things, if not if not addressed, like those sins, will, it will cry out. You can confess and, you know, God will wash away your sin, but if those things are not addressed, what does God say? Someone go to Deuteronomy 5, verse 9 and 10. Yeah. Deuteronomy 5, 9 and 10. Amen. 
Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, <coughs> visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if we don't confess, if we don't repent of the sins of our ancestors, it can possibly, God forbid, pass down to the third or fourth generation. May that not be our portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So as we're confessing our sins, confess the sins, the sins of your forefathers. Amen? Amen? So that whatever it is that they were dabbling and doodling and whatever in, it will not affect the next generation. While we are here, God has packaged each and every one of us with gifts, with talents. Amen? Amen. And he expects you to use it while you're here. For his glory amen? amen but because of our foundation is not fixed there always there, there'll be stagnancy there'll be delay there'll be so many things going on that's hindering us from reaching our full potential in christ amen while we're here amen, amen. so those the foundation needs to be fixed today amen, amen. Hallelujah. what are some problems in a polluted foundation what are some problems it could cause amen it fertilizes problem Amen? Amen. It will strengthen the enemy. Amen. It will be causing evil reinforcement. This can happen even after a person receives deliverance, making the deliverance a temporary relief. It establishes stagnancy because the foundation that should be that should carry progress is polluted. <coughs> it, it causes closed heaven and iron grounds. It can also cause premature death. May that not be our portion in the mighty Amen. name of the Lord Jesus. Listen, our foundation needs to be fixed. Amen? Amen. There are strongholds, hallelujah, that the enemy can use to destroy the, the, the destiny of men. Amen? I'm going somewhere with this. You know, I, anyone that knows, I work with children, a um, social worker with children's services. And there are some times where you see a child that's three years old in daycare or four year old. And they say how this child, ah, when this child comes into the, the school or whatever, it's like the, the staff is starting to panic. Okay, how are we gonna do with this child? This child is just so destructive. This child, I'm like, how can a child? And then they'll have a meeting with the mother or the, the parents of the child. And they say, oh, well, that's how the child, the child was always born that way. He came out of the womb from day one. I said, the devil is a liar. That's an inherited stronghold that needs to be dealt with. Amen? Amen. I'm like, how can an innocent child come out being a tyrant all over the place? The child doesn't know any better. No, no, no. Those things, listen, stronghold is in the mind. I'll give you another example. Your mindset can be a stronghold. And we're talking about foundation now. These things need to be addressed because... You know, people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen. If you don't know how to pray, amen? amen. Not necessarily know how to pray. If you don't know what specifically to, to pray, yes. the enemy can reign in other areas. Yes. When I was talking about putting on the full armor and everything, listen, we're in battle, right? And our prayer points have to be targets. Yes. If I'm in battle and I'm fully armored and I have my sword, and I'm shooting like this, and I'm fighting the enemy like this, if I'm lucky, if I'm fortunate, maybe I'll get someone. But am I effective? No. Listen, anyone trained for battle is trained to aim, right? Yeah. Yeah. The word of God, you have to be specific. When God reveals certain things in your life, he reveals so that he's teaching you how to pray concerning those Amen. things. Amen. 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 So if he reveals that, listen, listen, listen. This is what your great-grandmother was into. And not to cause you to panic, oh God, Lord, God, this is me. I can't believe my tenor. No, 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 no. So he needs you to address that spiritually, to pray and pull down whatever stronghold, whatever it is that that person was into that is affecting your life and could possibly affect the next generation. The book has to stop here. So that's why he's opening your eyes to show you those things so that you can take the word and like an arrow pierced that specifically. If I'm running around praying endlessly about general things, praise God, but I'm not really hitting the targets that's troubling my life, amen? amen. So the word of God is like a weapon. Just see it like that. And God will reveal certain things concerning your foundation, concerning your life, concerning your family, and it's not to cause panic. There's so many men and women of God. You see our pastor here is gifted in Revelation. 
you know, sometimes people think like, oh, okay, he knows everything. Pastor, da, da, da. it's whatever God reveals. Amen. 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 And he's revealing that through him to you so that you can do something spiritually about it. That you can take authority concerning that situation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Praise God. I'm going somewhere. Be patient with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what are strongholds? <clears throat> All kinds of thinking, thought patterns, or ideas that put people against God are strongholds. Any kind of thinking or activity that exalts itself before the knowledge of God is a stronghold. And this stronghold is a sort of protection or defense for the devil. It's a system of thought or an order of bondage in the mind or in the body used by the devil to attack you. It is an area from where the demons can operate. So let's say I'm battling with bitterness. If I don't address that, then they have a fortress inside of me. Demons can now come inside that fortress and that bitterness could be a shield. Amen? Amen? I have to uproot that bitterness from my life so that they have nowhere to hide. Right. So that I can speak the word of God to that situation and there's no force around them. They have to obey the word of God and be uprooted. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How to tear down strongholds? Repentance. We spoke about that. Not just repentance of sins that we committed knowingly or unknowingly, but also repentance for the sins of our forefathers. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us have to change our mindset. I know, I know, I know I'm not just speaking about myself today. Amen? Amen? Some of us have to change our mindset. And if you don't realize it, you just continue to think that way and hinder the work of God in your life. There are some people that God will speak a word saying that, okay, you are going to be this. This is what's inside of you. And you're looking at your circumstances. You're like, praise God, but uh, I don't know. It just seems like other situation. Just silence your mouth. Just silence your mouth. Because that's a negative thing and that's a stronghold in the mind that needs to be uprooted. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are different people that, you know, come to pray for different reasons. You know, you can have a woman, a man looking for a spouse. Praise God, there's nothing wrong with that. You're looking for um, a, um, your help me. You come to the man or woman of God for prayer. Praise God. <coughs> We're praying for you, but in your mind, you're thinking, and go to the person you have for me. Ah, he has to, he has to have a doctorate. <laughs> I can't marry a guy that doesn't have a doctorate. Meanwhile, you don't even have a first degree. <laughs> you're praying, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he has to have a 12 pack. <laughs> Meanwhile, you don't even know the inside of the gym. <laughs> Our mindset needs to change, amen? Yeah. <laughs> or, or some of the men, they're praying, ah, her hair. Her hair has to be like this. <laughs> Meanwhile, you don't even have hair. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> <laughs> I know God is not just speaking to me today, amen? Our mindset must change, you know? We need to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us, despite of your situation. Despite of what happened in the past. Listen, there are some people that speak, and then they, they, I completely understand where they're coming from. If you're thinking of the word, yes, they're justified in thinking that, or being angry, or feeling emotional. You know, there are people that have been abused as a, as a young child, you know. Oh, my super, 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 they did this to me. I was so innocent, I trust them. Amen. But here's the thing, and I get it. I get it. I can share my own testimony too, praise God. But you have to let that go. Because let me tell you, unforgiveness is also a stronghold. And you can hinder the work of God in your life. Listen, God is sharing these things. Not just to tell you to unforgive. Because he's ready to release blessings into your life. But he sees unforgiveness dead like a weed. Eating up the nutrients. Every time he tries to pour into your life, unforgiveness, bitterness is there. Because they don't travel alone. 
anger is there and it's just eating up all the nutrients. And then here we are preparing for power to prosper. How can he prosper us if we don't uproot these That's weeds right. in our life? Amen. 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 So yes, if I could, I would have a conversation. Yes, I can't believe that happened. You're completely justified in being angry. No, completely. How can he violate you? Absolutely, I get it. But you have to forgive. Amen. And there's a reason for that. Amen. Yes, that person cheated you. You gave them your bank account. You, when they had nothing, you were there. When they had no clothes, you gave them the shirt off your back. Then they went behind your back. They stole this. They saw that, yes, they're wrong. You still have to forgive. Amen. Amen. God knows what he was saying when he said turn the other cheek. Because he wants to release blessings into your Amen. life. Amen. He put things in us because he wants to use each and every one of us while we're here. There's work that needs to be done. Amen. See how the church is being attacked left, right, and center. We have to be fully equipped. We have to be prepared. Every gift in us cannot remain dormant. Amen? Amen. God wants to use us for his glory. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I thank God for what he's doing in this ministry in my life, you know. God knows that's the idea of the trying to get me to mount this pulpit for a minute. <laughs> but I kept saying that, well, you know, God has this time, you know. But that was a mindset, too. I could say excuses. Okay, well, you know, I have this kid to take care of. Well, who would? And then it's justified, but it's still an excuse. God knows what I have. He gave it to me. Amen. But he also knows what he put in me. Amen. You know, in my mind, I was telling myself, oh, you know, God, I think, you know, I'm trying to reason with God, have a counsel. Oh, God, you know, I'm, my strength is the support, you know. My strength is being the backbone. My strength is whatever he needs, I got. Hey, do I necessarily have to mount the pulpit? <laughs> but God knows Amen. better than Amen. I know myself. Amen. I say all this to God. I would never dishonor, amen, whom God tells me to honor. God tells me to honor my parents. So I would not sit here and dishonor them. But I know what I'm saying when I say things in your foundation needs to be uprooted. Things have been spoken into my life since infancy to deter me from being what God meant to be. There are some people, if they even see me today, will be baffled. Till today, my life is constantly being attacked by direct people that are close to me, within my family, that are practicing witchcraft in my family. And God is calling me out of that and has shielded me my entire life like an egg. Amen. Some of you are witnesses and didn't even realize it. God has used so many people to release word of knowledge here. Amen. Sharing things that God is doing in my life, what God is trying to take me to, what the enemy has done, how the grace of God has kept me like an egg. While thunderstorms and rain have been blowing all around me, but God has shielded me because he knew what he has put in me. Amen. But there are things in my foundation that I had to uproot. Otherwise, not only will it hinder the work of God in my life, it could possibly kill me. And that's the truth. God is calling us to another level. Amen? Amen. And He knows where He took you from. Amen. And what He's put in you, He will put it to you. Amen. But brethren, we have to fix our foundation. Amen. I pray that God will open up your eyes and give you understanding or reveal to you whatever area it is where you need to address spiritually. Amen? Amen. So that you use, hallelujah, his weapons. Amen. And you pierce the enemy in strategic places. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the word that you put in me to release, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you, O oh God, and I pray that it would not return to you void, but it would accomplish its purpose in the lives of your people, my God. Father God, we want our foundation, O oh God, to be fixed, O oh God. We want you to be our chief cornerstone, my God. But we want, O oh God, to uproot 
any generational curse in our life, oh God, any stronghold, oh God, in our life.